a model steamboat named Edith. This was part 12, removing the propeller, making a water tank support and cutting out a hatch in the stern. In this clip though, I'm just showing the repairs to the hull that are made with the JB Weld. Now it's time to fit the water tank and you will note how it goes into the hatch perfectly. It's no good just having the tank rattling about in the bottom of the boat. I need to make a support for the tank to hold it in position. I'm going to make this support for the tank using some mahogany that I have. I need to think about the design for a short while and I do like to do some work while I'm thinking so I'll clean up the bow. In the last episode I described how I repaired the bow using a small 8BA stainless steel bolt and quite a lot of JB Weld. Now the bow is really solid and I'm using a file to clean it up. JB Weld is a great material to use, it can be filed as you would file metal although it really feels more like hard filler than metal. But this should be a very strong and permanent fix. In this clip I'm using a drum sander in my small Minicraft drill to continue the cleaning up process because it's a little more gentle than the large file that I've just been using. And as you can see here, it's really taking shape. The drum sander is good for getting into the corners like this on the inside edge. The stainless steel bolt stuck out a little bit, so I'm grinding that off as well with the drum sander. By the time it's finished, it will not look like it's been repaired at all. I'm going to have to mix up some paint to match the brown paint around the combing. The black paint looks to me like it's just humbrol black paint, ordinary humbrol enamel. I just need to give it a bit more of a clean by hand using some emery cloth. I think this is round about 400 grit, and it's feeling quite smooth. I have a few other jobs to do first, but when I get round to painting this, I'll show how I do it. This, as you're obviously aware, is the propeller, and the owner of the boat seemed to want me to fit another propeller to the boat. He didn't like this one, and I can't say I'm too thrilled with it, painted with its sort of bronzy gold paint. And it looks like it's going to be fun removing the propeller from the propeller shaft. I'm not sure what this was, whether it was an Allen grub screw or a small bolt, but either way, it has to come out. You will notice that I'm not using my little mini craft drill for this because these small mini drills go far too fast. By running at a very high speed, all that happens is the small twist drill gets blunted and then it won't cut at all. Plus you have the added problem that the mini drills are not very powerful, that's why I'm using a standard battery operated Makita drill. In the end the propeller did not come off the shaft easily, I had to pull it out from the other end. Luckily the other end was just soft soldered onto the steel shaft and it had quite a crudely made brass fitting that engaged with a similar brass fitting on the engine. I'm going to change this for a more sensible fitting. And finally, after some time, the propeller parted company with its shaft. So, it's onto the tank base. You can probably see what I'm doing here. I'm using two longer pieces of mahogany down on the bench to set the correct height for the cross pieces, which in turn are bonded to the two side pieces of wood and these two side pieces have been specially shaped to fit in the bow. I couldn't show the fitting of these shaped pieces into the hull, because whichever angle I attempted to film, I didn't really get any suitable video that showed you what I was doing. I got plenty of shots of my shoulder though. At the moment I'm using some cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue or super glue to hold the bits of wood together. But there's a bit of a problem. This wood was given to me by one of my viewers and I'm really grateful it's beautiful stuff and apparently it came from his father's window frames. The wood's approximately 50 years old and it really is lovely stuff to work with, it's very very dry. But that's not very good for making cyanoacrylate adhesive set. I could have just clamped it together and gone away for 24 hours, then it would have set but then there wouldn't have been a video. So here's a good tip. Apply CA glue to one side of the wood and some PVA adhesive to the other side. And what happens is the wetness of the PVA glue causes rapid setting of the CA glue. So the CA glue holds the parts together and then once the PVA glue dries in its own time you get a very strong joint. And to make sure that this tank support never comes apart it's a bit over the top but I pinned them as well using some panel pins. And in this clip I'm just doing a test fit of the tank to make sure that the tank goes in and sits on the stand, and indeed it does. Now the good design of this stand is there's some room underneath the tank for quite a lot of lead sheeting. And as I showed earlier, I lifted the position of the cross pieces on the bench with packings so that they don't sit at the bottom of the boat, but they sit above it, about a centimetre above it. 
so there's plenty of room underneath the tank stand for a good amount of ballast. And for the ballast in this boat, I'm going to use the type of lead sheet that roofers use to repair roofs. You can buy it in rolls from builders merchants. You can easily cut this lead sheet with a pair of scissors to fit it anywhere you want in the boat, either in single sheets or in big lumps by folding it over. As you can see in this clip, both the tank and the mounting come out of the boat very easily. What I need to do is fit this tank mounting into the boat. I'm going to fit it in with some JB Weld, but that's just to tack the stand in place. I will be using some glass fibre to permanently fix it in the boat. But before I fix the stand into the boat at all, I'm giving it a coat of black paint, just to waterproof it and seal the wood. This is the same black paint that I painted the tank with. And while it's drying, I think I'll have a look at this propeller. The owner of the boat does not like this propeller, because he mentioned on several occasions, oh, and can you change that propeller, which I'm going to do, I'll get one from Prop Shop. I usually get my propellers from Prop Shop, because they're very nicely made. They're not brass, they're made from bronze, and they're cast just like the full size would be. The address is on screen in case you want to make inquiries. The only thing I don't like about Prop Shop propellers is they don't have a pointy end, but you can't have everything. This next job is not the nicest job I'll ever do. I need to remove this part and cut a hatch below it to fit a servo to operate the rudder. Please note this is not a grinding disc, it's a small metal saw. And I'm using this so it doesn't scatter the lead everywhere because I'm cutting through the solder, not the steel. Usual health and safety warnings, this is lead. The paint may have lead in it, so it's a good idea, apart from wearing eye protection, to wear some sort of a breathing mask. The good news is I didn't have to cut very far in and it came away very easily just by levering it off with a screwdriver. And no, look, it's very rusty underneath. No matter though, my small flapper wheel will remove all the rust fairly quickly. It's a bit of a waste of time though because this is the part I'm going to cut out. And for this job, I'm using a cutting disc. This is a proper Dremel cutting disc and it's reinforced. It's like a miniature angle grinder disc and it cuts very well, surprisingly well. A word of caution though, watch your fingers with this because it will cut your fingers just as well as it's cut in this steel, in fact probably better, but with the added disadvantage of a lot more pain. This job took a while, so I've edited the video so it's not too boring. I wish it had been this quick in real time. But eventually, and believe me it's quite satisfying when it does it, I got through all of the pieces of metal and the panel dropped out. So now I have an almost square hole in the deck. When the job's finished and I've fitted a servo down inside the hull, which operates the rudder, I will refit this part to cover up the fact that there's a servo there. I'm taking this opportunity to clean up the edges of the hole that I've just cut because they were quite sharp, and also the paint's a bit rough around the edge, so now we have a proper aperture into which I can fit one of these. I'll need to make a special mounting for the servo, more about that in a forthcoming episode. And now it's time to get my JB Weld out. I like this stuff, it's a two part epoxy resin mix with a difference. According to what it says on the packet, it contains metal particles. Whatever it contains, it's very strong indeed. And first of all, I'm going to use it for repairing this, and also a couple of holes on the deck. And the good thing is, this JB Weld is just about the same colour as the deck, in like a battleship grey. The real reason for mixing this amount of JB Weld is to fit the stand into the boat and watch how I do it. I coat the two underside surfaces with JB Weld. I insert it through the rear hatch and rotate it underneath the front hatch and the JB Weld contacts the hull. The next job is to fit the tank and the tank slides in perfectly because that's the way it was designed. The tank sits on the two cross pieces and the weight of the tank holds the part in position and I'm going to leave it like that until the JB Weld sets. And that's about it for now. I've made sure that the tank sits perfectly centrally underneath the hatch. And this is a shot of the JB Weld setting. And after 24 hours, I will continue with the job. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.